Well, welcome and congratulations uh, for investing in yourself. Uh, we're going to begin our first module today. This is the home study course, uh, Tax Liens Exposed. This is module number one. We're going to begin with some tax lien terminology. And the reason why we're starting here is because every industry, every business, uh, everything um, that's out there has its own language and nomenclature and we're going to uh, start with tax lien terminology and nomenclature it's no different now when you hear some of these things some of these terms you're not going to know what they mean others you will know what they mean uh, either way that's all right just let it uh, let this information sink in and it'll begin to make sense as we go along um, you're not going to be using every one of these terms uh, as a tax lien investor uh, but it's good to know them all right, so uh, let's uh, let's begin right off. Well, th what are the things that you uh, need to know? What are they? Well, uh, like I said, it's that vocabulary. And here are some 20 terms uh, that you're going to be coming across. As I said, you won't be using uh, all of these, uh, but uh, these are just uh, terms and words um, and uh, terms of art, if you will, that you'll come across uh, in the tax lien investing arena. One is TLC. TLC is a... Uh, uh, an abbreviation of tax lien certificate right that's the certificate uh, that is a financial instrument that the county creates when a taxpayer doesn't pay their taxes the county creates that tax lien certificate and sells it to an investor and then the uh, county waits for the taxpayer to pay the county and when the taxpayer pays the county along with fees and interest then the county gives the investor that's you all of their money back plus that interest that it that uh, the county collected from that particular tax payer all right then the next one is LTV that's loan to value we all uh, know what that is we see what uh, that is as an example if a property was uh, worth one hundred thousand dollars and there would be an eighty thousand dollar loan on that property that would be an eighty thousand dollar or eighty percent loan to value right a hundred thousand dollars being uh, the 100 percent of the value and if there would be a mortgage of eighty thousand dollars that eighty thousand dollar would represent eighty percent loan to value and there's um, someone that's called a broker a broker is a middleman if you will uh, or a middle person I don't want to be gender specific the broker is the person that puts the meeting of the minds together to um, usually it's a buyer and a seller uh, there are real estate brokers, there are stock brokers, there are business brokers, there are many, there are power brokers, there are many types of um, of licensed brokers, and there are, of course, unlicensed brokers. When I say unlicensed brokers, I mean they're uh, in uh, business. Business brokering is not licensed in all of the states. Um, mortgage brokering, of course, uh, is uh, a licensed um, uh, uh, uh business and uh, so is real estate brokerage so when I say brokers are not necessarily licensed I don't mean real estate brokers or mortgage brokers they definitely do have licenses and then due diligence this is the information that you need whether it comes from the county um, uh, from public records from the internet uh, that is all the information that you can put together on a property this is especially important when you're doing tax liens um, and uh, tax deeds the thing is what you want to do is have all that information first what you don't want to be doing is going out and buying a piece of property or buying a tax lien certificate and then doing the due diligence right you want to do it first you want to know uh, about the property before you actually um, before you actually pull the trigger and buy it public records right that's where we're going to be finding some of the information uh, it all begins there the public records uh, again whether it's the courthouse or whether it's online uh, the internet has really done a, a wonderful job and some of the counties have uh, have a tremendous amount of information online others haven't caught up uh, but uh, and each um, each one has its own advantages sometimes it's a tremendous advantage that there's information online and sometimes it's a tremendous advantage that uh, there's less information online and of course uh, we have uh, our interest rate well we know uh, that the interest rate when we're an investor is something that we're going to be receiving meaning that if there's uh, 
a tax lien and it's a thousand dollars and it's a 25% interest rate that means uh, we as the tax lien investor buying a tax lien certificate we're going to receive that interest rate so interest is very good if you're on the receiving end of it it's not so good if you're on the paying end of it right so just remember you know what an interest rate is it's actually a percentage of an amount of money paid for its use over f over a specific frame of time right so it's usually expressed as an annual percentage and that's the way it is when we give the percentage rates in the subsequent uh, modules uh, you'll see um, you'll see that the um, uh, that uh, we're talking about yearly interest right that's interest rate then there's a the redemption period that's the period of time that you have to wait until uh, actually applying for the deed right that redemption period has to be satisfied so um, and throughout that redemption period the taxpayer has the uh, right to pay their taxes right which means that, and that's redeem so if they have the right to pay their taxes that means uh, there's we're not working against the taxpayer the taxpayer isn't necessarily working against us it just means that uh, the taxpayer once they pay their taxes uh, what we wind up getting is all of our money back, remember that, um, plus the uh, the rate of interest. So that's what's good about it. So we have two positions. Either we get all of our money back, plus interest, or uh, we're going to wind up getting the property for $0.10 cents on the dollar, right? So that's the, um, that's the interest rate. Now, when we talk about the subsequent, right, just, so what we're talking about here are these are previous year taxes right so subsequent years taxes so what is that it's also called subtaxing and what happens sometimes uh, is that uh, the um, the counties will attach the previous year's taxes to uh, to a pre-existing lien so that's a subsequent sometimes there's a subsequent sale all right and we'll talk about some of these things uh, later on in some of the other modules again don't drive yourself crazy with these terms these are just things that you'll hear special deed special deed um, will be a, sometimes this will be a habitual um, a bid off a habitual and this what happens is that these uh, these particular properties wind up always going into leftovers um, and this takes place and that there will be a special deed sale uh, from the county and that uh, brings us then to uh, bid backs right it's like bid back <clears throat> or uh, or bid in uh, when you hear bid back bid in even you'll see bid off okay what happens is that this is from the leftovers from the previous uh, sales <clears throat> and some people think that the leftovers um, are garbage properties sometimes they're not as desirable there's no question about that but sometimes there are many gems inside of that um, inside of that pile of rocks so uh, I mean there are great properties all over the place what makes what determines a great property uh, from uh, from a stinky property well the thing is you have to do your due diligence very very important right and bid backs bid offs right uh, bid ends those are all this you know this right in the same family uh, discount uh, so when we say discount you're going to be buying these properties uh, at uh, at a discount uh, that's very important remember we said that uh, you're going to be getting the properties at five and ten and fifteen cents on the dollar that's correct now um, any day that you can buy a property for 15 cents on the dollar, that's a good day. Any day you can get a property for 20 or 25 cents on the dollar, that's also a good day. Just understand that when you're buying a tax lien certificate, what's guaranteed is that you're going to get all of your money back plus the interest rate. Now, of course, you've, you have to do your due diligence uh, so that you know uh, about the property that that lien is on. Very, very important, right? So let's just move through these of vocabulary terms so that you get them uh, in your mind at the end of each module there's going to be some homework for you to do as well right so um, because what we want to do is during our conversations we want to make sure that you know the subject matter right so we have to know that so uh, so here we go bid down the interest bid down the interest typically as an example let's say um, in Florida Florida is an 18 percent interest state and if you're going to go to one of the uh, auctions, the live auctions, uh, where they're selling the uh, the tax lien certificates, they do it on a bid down the interest uh, procedure. So if it's 18 percent, the next bid will be 17 and three quarter percent. The next bid will be 17 and a half percent. The next bid will be 17 and a quarter percent. The next bid will be 17 percent, and then the next bid will be 16 and three quarter percent, and it'll it can keep going down. That's called 
bid down the interest, whether it's going down a quarter percent at a time, or a half a percent at a time, or if it's going down one percent at a time, right? It's all called bid down the interest. Then there's rotational bidding, um, also called rotational or round robin. It's going around a room, right? And the auctioneer or the uh, tax collector is actually going around and doing it in a in a rotational uh, fashion. Um, and we'll get more into this stuff later, but these are the types of bidding. This is the physical bidding. This is when you actually go to the sale. Uh, premium bidding, uh, again, premium goes right uh, in hand in hand with bid down the interest. It's bidding down the interest, and you can actually, uh, in one of the sales, and you'll see it um, at some point, um, if you have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to work together personally, uh, we can go to a sale or two together. Uh, what what can take place is that the investors will bid down the interest on a particular lien to zero and at that point then premium bidding takes over premium is also called overbid right so the premium will take over and uh, at that point so let's say the um, the tax lien certificate uh, is a thousand dollars and now uh, you're not getting eighteen percent on your money anymore now you're getting zero and not only you're getting zero uh, it's a thousand dollars for the tax lien certificate, and let's say that the the, um, the uh, premium goes up by a hundred dollars each time. You may wind up paying fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars for that tax lien certificate, and not be getting any interest. Uh, well, why would you do that? You do that if you were more interested in the property itself, getting the property for the pennies on the dollar, than you were interested in the interest rate. Right. So that's what that is. So that's the. Um, that's where premium uh, comes in. Then there's random bidding. Uh, what takes place is this is very often done by computer. Uh, and sometimes it's almost done like uh, everybody's got their name or the bidder number in a hat, and the auctioneer or the tax collector picks the name out, uh, and and we that people have the information in, and he just he or she just picks the person's name and then calls them randomly. So it's not um, it's not a, an actual bidding where you're bidding against somebody. It's more like a it's almost like a bingo game for crying out loud. So that's um, that's random. Then there's something called bid down the ownership. Well, ownership, um, for me, uh, either I'm going to own something or I'm not. So I don't engage in a bid down the ownership environment. There's no reason for me to do that. Um, uh, my judgment says the only time I would be interested in doing that is if I had no other choice, meaning there was some property that I owned uh, and, uh, and the jurisdiction that I wanted um, to get a piece of property in it was right next to me. Uh, and if they did bid down uh, the ownership and I would be forced into it, well, I would do that. But none of us are going to be forced into it. There are very few uh, areas that actually do it. So um, that's one of the things that you really don't have to uh, worry about doing on the bid down the ownership. But you just need to know that it's out there. And then over-the-counter sale. Over-the-counter sale is wonderful. Uh, I like the over-the-counters. Over-the-counters is where the leftovers go. These are the properties that are not sold uh, at the uh, at the auctions, and once they go to the uh, over-the-counter um, uh, column at the county, well, the investors can buy those properties then at any time. They don't have to wait for a sale. They don't have to wait for a, a specific time. Very often, they're able to buy them at any time. Sometimes they have to wait for a specific time, but usually they're just there for the um, uh, for the investors to buy at any time. I love that because that puts you in control. Now it's good to understand how the physical auctions work. It's good to understand all that, uh, but we um, but we work with a lot of students that are in other parts of the world. Uh, they can't just get up and run to an auction sale every time there's an auction sale that takes place. And we also deal with students who travel a lot and uh, they don't have the time to go to the auction sales. And we also deal with students who are shut-ins or they're dis uh, disabled. They have uh, some, some of them are severely disabled. Uh, and they can do this from the comfort of their own home. Uh, and they don't have to drive themselves crazy that they, um, they don't have the physical ability to go out to a, a, a physical sale, right? So that's the over-the-counter sale. And that's really the proper use of it. And then tax deed. The tax deed, that's what you're going to get when you wind up uh, buying one of these properties and there are tax lien sales understand and there are tax deed sales the tax deed sale is when the county is selling the physical property itself that's a tax deed sale 
Now, a tax lien sale is when the county is selling the tax lien certificate. Right? The tax lien certificate is a financial instrument that the county created. Right? And then there's something called struck off. Uh, struck off uh, very often will take place uh, when either a uh, sale of the of the asset or sale of the tax lien doesn't happen, it reverts back to the uh, county and they struck it off, they strike it off and if it happens enough sometimes the county winds up foreclosing on the property themselves and then they they then sell the property, the physical property to us the investor from the struck off sale. So it also struck off takes place uh, when um, if the, someone hasn't paid their taxes due to uh, not a financial inability, uh, but because they've passed on, and nobody buys the uh, nobody buys a particular asset, so if somebody doesn't buy that particular tax lien certificate, uh, and that tax then the taxes or that tax lien is on a, a piece of property that the taxpayer is now deceased on, well, if nobody buys that particular tax lien. Um, it's not going to stay in the name of the estate. What will happen is it will escheat to the state, which means that it'll, uh, a piece of it will go to the county, a piece of it will go to the state, and um, a, piece of, a piece of that uh, property will also uh, go to the municipality. And this is all through struck off. Right, so that's what happens. Now, as, as an investor, what does that mean? You, uh, that you're still getting the entire property, but that's I'm just letting you know how it's carved up you know, on the municipal uh, and on the, county, uh, on the county level and on the town level. All right? So uh, th that's the beginning stages. Right? The beginning stages of everything is that vocabulary. So those are 20 terms, and so you'll have them. You'll have these, um, these videos to watch so you can go over them again. Also in the system, you're getting uh, a glossary, right? So you'll read that and familiarize yourself with the, uh, with the tax lien glossary. But just understand that the tax lien is a legal hold, right? And the tax lien is, is, um, is there. It's a phantom lien. It's on the properties. Uh, sometimes uh, people don't understand this. They say, well, I don't understand why um, or how there could be a tax lien. Uh, I did a, uh, people will say to me, you know, George, I did a title search on a property, and I didn't say a tax, and I did not see a tax lien. Well, you're only going to see the tax lien on the property when somebody doesn't pay the taxes, but it's always there. It's just lying in wait. As soon as an individual doesn't pay their taxes, then the tax lien pops up. That's the phantom lien, and then uh, if it's still not paid, the county then creates the tax lien certificate. Right, so this is very, you know, this is very important, and that is a financial instrument that the county sells uh, to an investor. Right, they sell that to the investor, and let's say that the uh, the investor is getting uh, 24, 25 percent interest. That the county pays the investor, that's me, that's you, the 24, 25 percent interest, because the county has collected uh, that interest uh, in penalty form from the taxpayer. Right, so we're dealing with the county on a direct basis. We're not dealing with the person that is the taxpayer. TLC, that's the abbreviation for tax lien certificate, and then the deed. What happens, okay, is that this is you'll wind up with a deed after the redemption period. Once the redemption period is over, if the taxpayer has not paid the taxes on the property uh, within that redemption period, or I should say, by the last day and last hour of the redemption period, it might be that the redemption period on a particular tax lien uh, ends at uh, 12.01 p.m. Um, on uh, April 18th, right? If that's the case, 12.01 p.m. April 18th, uh, 2010, what that will what will happen then is that the bell goes off, the timer is done, the egg is cooked, and that means then that that uh, property then will uh, not revert back to the taxpayer. The property then uh, will wind up being claimed by the person who holds the tax lien. And the person who holds that tax lien certificate is the person that bought the tax lien certificate. So if the property was worth two hundred grand, it was a two hundred thousand dollar property, and the tax lien uh, that you bought against that property was two thousand dollars, that means you'll wind up with this property worth two hundred thousand uh, dollars for the two thousand dollars in taxes. Uh, that is.
a very good day for a tax lien investor, right? So um, let's go to the let, the next slide. Let's see what we have, right? This is what we need to um, to do before the sale, right? We've got to do that due diligence. There's a background research, right? You've got to do that. Uh, that this is one of the terms that we had, right? When we went when we uh, when we opened uh, this particular module up, due diligence is very important because sometimes people go out and they decide that what they're going to do is just buy tax liens. They're going to go out and buy tax liens. So they buy tax liens, but they don't check out the property that the tax lien is on. So the county um, is not there to protect us. The county is there to, what they're doing is collecting taxes. That's what they want. The county will reward us, right, through safety, right, and through giving us a very, very large interest rate. But now, what we have to do is protect ourselves. We have to know as much as we can about those properties uh, before we uh, actually pull the trigger and buy those tax liens. Very, very important. It will be checking public records. It will be doing uh, things like that, right? Because you want to know everything you can about that property. What are the other liens? Now, here's the thing that I love about this. Even though there might be other liens against the property, understand this, that that tax lien takes precedent over the other liens. It is stronger than the other liens. That's what I love about it, right? It's even stronger than the mortgage lien. This is so fantastic. And understand that we're not in competition with the mortgage company. Sometimes what will happen is if a mortgage company... Um, uh, has a is is uh, named in the situation. The mortgage company has a lien on the property. What will happen is the uh, the taxpayer uh, hasn't paid their taxes. And if the mortgage company in this particular case, uh, if the mortgage company isn't collecting uh, the the taxes through escrow, doing it in escrow, and they usually do that as much as they can because the mortgage company wants to protect themselves. They protect themselves through escrowing the tax money uh, every time if, with every uh, mortgage payment that that taxpayer makes. But if for whatever reason it's a, uh, a bank or a funding company or lending institution that's not escrowing the taxes, well they put themselves at risk for losing uh, their money very, very quickly. So what will happen is that that taxpayer doesn't pay the taxes and the bank is not escrowing the taxes. Um, and the uh, taxpayer could be actually paying the mortgage at the same time that they're not paying the taxes. This happens as well. So what will wind up happening is you or me as an investor, we're holding this tax lien certificate. The bank doesn't know it exists, uh, and uh, we wind up uh, getting the property right from under the nose of the bank. So it's just, <laughs> again, um, <laughs> you know, this is why the banks, uh, when uh, when they're taking the bailout money, this is why the banks, uh, when they're um, when they're looking to get uh, high rates of interest, what the banks are doing is they're plunking it into tax liens because it's safe. Understand that this is safe. That tax lien is safer than a mortgage, meaning it's safer for you as an investor to have a pile of tax liens than it is for you to have a pile of mortgages. Okay, this is absolutely the truth, and it's absolutely fantastic. That's why I love the tax liens, for the safety, for the sanity, right, and for the uh, windfall that you can get, right? So the thing, there's a couple of uh, terms, right, uh, the loan-to-value, right? We talked about that. That's the difference between the amount of the mortgage on a home and its fair market value, right? So that's the loan-to-value. You'll be hearing that uh, as we go along as well. Right. Remember the broker, that's somebody who organizes the deal between the buyer and the seller. Although people sometimes attend a tax lien sale right on behalf of other parties, they even bid on their behalf. If somebody bids for you at a tax lien sale, that person is called a proxy. Right, uh, But understand that th you don't need a particular license. You don't need a broker uh, uh, to work with you at a tax lien sale. But uh, as an auctioneer, as you know, I'm a real estate auctioneer, um, that uh, I know of plenty of uh, brokers uh, that could really enhance uh, their businesses by actually going out and acting as proxies for other people, right? To to do that in particular areas uh, that they that they operate in, right? Whether it's in Florida or whether it's in Texas or whatever, you know, different states uh, where you know that that's where they choose to operate in, and they can work with out-of-state people, right? 
Um, very important is to analyze your investment, right? You have to analyze that. But before I even get into you know analyzing the investment, um, let's talk about the interest rate, right? And this is very very important. You know that if you took five grand and you plunked it into a a money market, it was paying about six percent, which is a lot of money for a money market right now. I mean, that's it, about double what you could get in thirty years. You'd have a little over twenty-nine thousand dollars coming back, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? You take five thousand dollars, you invest it at the rate of six percent. In thirty years, you have twenty-nine thousand and change, right? So that's a lot, just short of thirty thousand dollars. That's really good. This is this is what six percent does, right? When you're talking about uh, plunking down five thousand dollars, well, when you um, when you do a, a tax lien investment, right? That five thousand dollars, if you did it in Arizona. Right in Arizona at 16%, you'd wind up in 30 years with $429,000. That's $400,000 more uh, than than a money market fund. Right, so that's huge. So this is why I love the tax lien investments because even if you don't get a property and you will get properties when you're doing this you will get properties and you you know you you follow the way we do it you will get properties but if you didn't get a property you're still better off than all those other investors because you're getting rates of 16% and over 30 years 16% that $5000 without having to add any more principal comes to four hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars that's absolutely huge right and just understand right that if we did that in Texas at twenty five percent that comes to four million dollars instead of four hundred thousand right four million and I think it's uh, four million um, uh, thirty eight thousand so four million bucks comes back to you from a $5,000 investment in Texas over a period of 30 years. Uh, 400000 comes back to you uh, in Arizona. And of course, if you did you know, a little money market fund in that same 30 years, that $5,000 turns into about uh, $30,000, right? $29,000. You know, the truth is in the numbers and the numbers don't lie. I mean, that's just, just, just the way it is. And those illustrations have nothing to do with what I was just talking about. It's got nothing to do with actually getting a piece of real estate. So when you add the real estate into it, right, it really grows exponentially. It's just a, such a fantastic windfall of an investment. And I love the safety piece of it. And that safety piece combined with this windfall, because the, the most important thing is that you don't lose your principal. So number one, right, don't lose your money. So when you're looking at a tax lien, you've got the interest rate to look at, right? That's the, the one very important factor. It's what is the return? How much is the interest rate? Is the interest rate 12%? Is the interest rate 16%? Is the interest rate 24%? You know, what is the interest rate? This is very, very important. And on top of that, uh, the other factor is the redemption period. How long must I hold that tax lien certificate? before I can claim the deed. So just understand then what this means, that if you buy um, a $1,000 tax lien certificate um, and the redemption period is one year and the taxpayer pays off their taxes in that one year, right? so you'll wind up with $1,240, right? That's 24% on the $1,000. You'll get $1,240 back. So that's all of your money, Right, plus the uh, plus that exorbitant rate of interest of 24%. It's just absolutely fantastic. But the other side of it is that if the taxpayer does not redeem, meaning the taxpayer does not pay their taxes, well, you wind up with is that property. So if, uh, if you bought a tax lien certificate for $1,000 against a property that was worth uh, 50000 bucks. Uh, well, then you'd have, uh, you know, you'd have a, a $50,000 property for $1,000. If the property was worth 25000 bucks, you'd have a $25,000 property for 1000 bucks. Now, I don't care about the, uh, about numbers except for the spreads, meaning the profits. I'm not in love with numbers because I like uh, little characters on a piece of paper. But any day that you can get something that's worth twenty-five grand for $1,000, 
that's a darn good day. What if you did this? And because we're talking numbers, right? And you say, well, you buy a tax lien against a piece of property that's worth a hundred grand, or or a tax lien against a piece of property that's worth two hundred grand, and the tax lien is for a thousand dollars, right? And and those are windfalls. So it's fantastic, right? So, but what about a piece of property that's worth twenty five grand, and you have a thousand dollar tax lien? Well, what's wrong with that? Right? I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's a piece of property that you got, and if you bought it for a thousand bucks, it's worth twenty-five thousand, and you sold it for twelve thousand. You know, that's a twelve hundred percent. That's one thousand two hundred percent on your money. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, so this is the kind of money that we're talking about. These are the kinds of returns, and they're absolutely fantastic. But the caveat is this: it sounds great, but you have to do it. So when you hear the information, keep thinking in, in, in the back of your mind, like, how am I going to start doing this? Where am I going to start doing it? You know, when you're going through all of your materials, and you'll see, we've got all the counties. There's like 5,000 counties in the United States. And you'll see it. You'll have the contact information there. So just start to think about where it is that you want to do it. All right? And we can talk about that a little bit. And we can coach you and help you as to where you should start. But that's really what it is. Just knowing about it isn't enough. You have actually have to uh, take the action and then begin doing it right so we talked about bid down the interest a little bit when we uh, did those uh, 20 terms I right? just understand that when you're bidding it down the um, the government or that county is going to start at the maximum rate allowed right in Florida like I said it's 18 percent in New Jersey it's 18 percent so you know if in in um, in Arizona, it's 16%. It's whatever it is in that particular place. And then the interest rate is bid down from that point, right? So it can go down a quarter of 1% each time. So it may start at 18 and then go to 17 and 3 quarter and then 17 and a half and then 17 and a quarter and then 17. And then 16 and 3 quarter and then 16 and a half and then 16 and a quarter and then 16. Or it may go 18, 17, 16. 15, 14, 13, however it works, right? It, and, and that's the thing. I mean, once you understand the broad piece is that whether it's going down at a, a quarter of a percentage point uh, each time, right, at each bid, or if it's going down a half of a percentage point, or if it's going down an entire uh, percentage point, that's okay. It's still bid down the interest, right? So that can go all the way down. And it can go down to zero, like we talked about uh, earlier, right? That can go all the way down to zero. And then once it goes down to zero, then premium can take place, right? What will happen is, is then the, um, the tax collector or the auctioneer will begin to add a premium to that tax lien certificate, right? So, um, so we'll talk about more of that later in terms of, uh, you know, what sort of direction or what, what sort of uh, methodology uh, or what sort of strategy uh, that you might want to use at a particular sale, right? Now, there's that bid down the ownership. When you're bidding down uh, an ownership, this is something uh, that I don't get involved in. I suggest you don't get involved in unless there's a particular hot property someplace. And you just got to have it. I like to, if for me, either I own something or I don't own something. I don't like to own 95% of it. I don't like to own 75% of it. I don't want to own 50% of it. Uh, when I'm talking about a piece of real estate, either I own it or I don't own it. Right. So that's bidding down the ownership. So that's a that's a kind of a thing for me. Um, and and, uh, and for my students, I try to keep my students uh, away for the, uh, from this. I have not had a student yet that decided to say, you know, George, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and bid down the ownership. Why? You don't need to. There are so many tax liens in so many jurisdictions. Like I said, there are 5,000 counties out there. There are millions of tax liens to choose from, to do your due diligence on, right? So it really doesn't pay to go into a, a bid down the ownership scenario, all right? So let's keep going, right? So where are we at this point, right? We're talking about being at 
the auction right then this is the these are the terms right over the counter we know we're not going to be at the auction over the counter sales we can do at home or for traveling we can do them by picking up the telephone by using the fax we can do them by being online uh, that's the the uh, that's what we can do but when we hear terms like premium right that's where the investor is willing to pay a premium in excess above the lien amount right and that comes after what it comes after they bid down the interest and then there's premium on top of that right so just understand another word for premium is overbid you'll hear that as well right that's another word for premium so now uh, we've got premium and then there's random selection we talked about the different types of auctions right there's the round robin auction right and there's the uh, open outcry auction as well right so we have these types of things right so but now we have we're talking about random selection that's where the bidder is randomly selected right from those people that are offering a bid it's usually done by a computer or like I said earlier uh, the names are sort of thrown into a hat you know or sometimes they have that little round thing that they mix okay that little barrel and they they turn it like they're at a bingo hall and they pull the name out of it right so it almost looks like a lottery right and that's random selection as well now when you see random and you see premium and you see all these things if you're doing this at home and you're doing over the counter you can avoid all of these methods and you can do them just at home and you can do it in a much more relaxed uh, or much more relaxed fashion right so some people are concerned that all of the good properties are going to be gone if they wait for the over-the-counter that's not the case uh, they they have to do their due diligence and maybe they should do a little extra due diligence if they're going to be doing over-the-counter uh, but at the, but there are plenty, plenty, plenty of very, very good properties uh, that are uh, left over and over the counter, right? So, you know that. Then there's the rotational bidding. That's when what'll take place is that the auctioneer or the tax collector is going to um, go in a round robin sort of a method. Uh, sometimes it'll be uh, around the room, right? And sometimes it'll be in a straight line. And what'll happen is is that uh, the the uh, the auctioneer or the tax collector is going to offer uh, the particular property uh, to uh, you know to the first person in line. The person is going to say yes or no. They may refuse it, and then they have to get on the back of the line, and then uh, they can't bid again, right? Until. Uh, their turn comes up again. So if there are 30 people, they've got to wait 30 times. Uh, if there are 60 people, they have to wait till you know the other you know 59 people go before they get another chance uh, at another lien. So that's the way that is, and that's the round robin, okay, or rotational selection, right? Um, what I don't want you to do uh, is to hear these terms. And say, oh my goodness, I, you know, again, oh, all these things, round robin, rotational. I hear it. I hear the bid down. I, I hear overbid. Uh, that means I have to go to the auction. You don't have to go to the auctions, right? So um, just just understand, okay? There are these uh, bid back or bid off sales, okay? Those also consist of uh, leftovers from previous sales. Sometimes. Uh, the uh, the counties will do that uh, live, okay, in person. Sometimes they'll do these uh, these uh, bid back, bid off sales. They'll do them uh, online. Uh, sometimes they'll just uh, post them, and you can do it on the telephone, all right? And it's um, and it's not necessarily an auction sale. So there's you know different you know different ways. Just what I want you to understand is that there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of liens that are out there. So don't think that you have to go running around chasing these things losing your soul in order to get one what you have to do is just understand what the rules and regulations are you know we're gonna help you with all of that right and and then just go after it and go after it in a very organized relaxed fashion right but here's what I love about what's going on uh, right now right now with the economy the way it's been is that there are many more properties uh, that have tax liens on them and there are many more properties that aren't being claimed uh, by the banks, right? So the banks are, you know, in flux. There's all this kind of stuff going on, and we have students that are getting a much greater degree of uh, of properties, meaning they're working a non-redemption strategy, and they're getting those properties for five and ten cents and fifteen cents on the dollar more often than they used to, and it's based on this, you know, whole mortgage meltdown thing, right? Struck off, we talked about that, right? That's the term for tax lien that is not sold at the auction, is therefore struck off, right? And we also said that uh, 
also what will take place is that's how properties as cheat e s c h e a t they'll as cheat right to the uh, to the state and then the county gets its piece that's if there's been a decedent someone has passed away uh, people uh, don't pay their taxes for many reasons some are financial reasons and if somebody passes away of course they have a very difficult time uh, paying their uh, their taxes uh, if someone has uh, has uh, uh, gone on to the next life, right? So that, that would be called a struck off. That's what that's called, right? And then over the counter. So these are the terms that you'll hear. You'll hear bid back, bid off, struck off, struck, over the counter. And understand that uh, on the over the counter sales with the bid back or the bid off or the struck offs, uh, you don't necessarily need right, to go to a sale, a physical sale in order to do that. Very often these are uh, posted uh, on the websites of the counties. Sometimes you may have to call and dialogue with the county and ask and just ask them, okay, what do you have over the counter? Uh, what do you have uh, on your struck off list? Do you have any bid backs or bid offs that I can buy? You know, that sort of thing. And we'll talk about that uh, in some of the uh, some of the other, other modules. Now there are some other tax sale terms that you'll hear as well. You'll hear special deed right um, and you know these will consist of the less the leftovers from uh, an annual sale uh, they're known as the bid backs or the bid offs like that where right, that we were just talking about and you'll hear it uh, you'll hear the term special deed usually that'll happen uh, six months after the sale they'll have the sale meaning the county will have the tax sale uh, nobody buys these uh, that's why they're called leftovers okay and they'll do a special deed sale they'll call it a special deed sale and for you it'll be the same uh, foreclosure process as the annual sale it's the same thing uh, and you'll just have to contact the tax sale unit with a purchase request right just like what I was talking about it's a matter of dialoguing right with that particular county and then there's something called a discount sale. Uh, these are habitual bid backs. They go back again. The bid backs, the bid offs, the bid ins, and uh, also sometimes it, uh, a discount sale will be a lump. Um, uh, it'll be a lump sale. Sometimes you'll just hear them call it a lump sale. It's kind of a funny term, but it's all the taxes owed, right? So it's the subsequent year taxes, including the current year taxes. They just lump it, you know, all onto um, onto that property. And it's just, uh, and they they'll call it a lump sale, and it's sold to the highest bidder, usually for a lesser amount than a combination of all those taxes owed. So just because it's a lump tax doesn't mean uh, that uh, that you have to pay the whole thing. Uh, very often, it's um, these properties sell for less than the combined uh, value of all those taxes. So that's a pretty darn good sale, if you ask me. Again, six-month period, that'll be a six-month uh, time frame after the original sale, and it's the same foreclosure process as the other sale. So what we're doing with this uh, chapter, this beginning chapter, is just to get you used to some of these terms, some of these things, so that you can start to think about the types of strategies that you want to uh, get into. And remember, we you know we touched on fair market value. We talked about that, what that is. That's the appraised value of a property as compared with the other property values on the market. Why do we keep coming back to this? We keep coming back to this because you want to know the fair market value of the property, right, when you do your due diligence. So if I'm buying a tax lien on a piece of property and that tax lien is two or three thousand dollars I want to make sure that I know what that fair market value is right not what it was worth two years ago or a year ago or five years ago I need to know what it's worth today so I want to know uh, what the fair market value is on that property today and so this way I can take a look at this uh, this tax lien certificate and uh, see if it's attractive to me because there will be a spread there'll be a spread between the fair market value of the property Right, uh, and it'll be uh, and what the tax lien amount is, and if it's a big enough spread, well, then I'm interested because that's where I'm going to make my uh, my profit. Right, there are junior liens, right? That's a mortgage or another encumbrance that's got a secondary uh, interest, right, uh, on the on the property, subordinate. The loan, right? It's subject to or junior to. It occupies a lower position that's inferior in order, right? Just understand that the superior lien is the tax lien that's why I love it but you have all these things so that you that you have this now some of our students are very advanced some of them are attorneys some of them are real estate brokers real estate agents right and and they know all these terms uh, but here's the most important thing to understand whether you're a real estate agent real estate broker uh, attorney you don't need to be a real estate agent real estate broker or an attorney in order to be a tax lien investor and that's what I love about it and quite frankly just 
understand that it's some of the smartest people in the nation are out there doing this and when you see them at the auction sales uh, they're not looking to share with you and tell you all about it because this is everybody's little secret right it's a little secret uh, there's not and and people say to me well George if this is so good if you if you can make 24 percent 25 percent a year on 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 your investment and at the same time you can buy properties for five and ten and fifteen cents on the dollar if that's the case how come everybody doesn't do it well I don't know except for I really believe this I believe that the powers that be the banks the insurance companies these are the institutional investors I believe that they don't want anybody to know about this. This is not a thing that's advertised like crazy out there. People don't even know. I mean, there are public notices, but you don't see, you know, big crazy signs come and get come and get properties at five and ten and fifteen cents on the dollar. You know why is that? Because most of these tax liens, right, and tax deeds, most of them are being sucked up by these institutional buyers. Now, the fact that I said most of them are being sucked up by the institutional buyers, which are the banks and the insurance companies, that doesn't mean that there are not millions and millions and millions of liens that uh, that are left over for us. There's plenty for us, right? But it's just that those are the big players, and those are the players that don't want us to know this secret. So just stick with the modules, keep doing what we're doing. We'll get through this, and then we'll make sure that you get out there and you start buying these liens. Uh, one wonderful uh, um, uh, thing to do is to buy tax lien certificates and this is just a, a, a great plan is to buy them in a self-directed retirement account you can do that because what you're doing then is you're buying the tax lien certificate in the name of your self-directed retirement account you can wait out the redemption period at the end of the redemption period if the property redeems meaning the taxpayer uh, paid the taxes what will happen is you'll get all of your money back plus the interest but it'll come back to the name of the uh, of the entity the self-directed retirement account it'll come back in the name of that the check will be made out let's say it's XYZ SDRA self-directed retirement account it'll come back directly into that and then you take that money and you do the same thing you roll it over into the next one right so you know if you bought a tax lien certificate for a thousand dollars and there was a 25 percent interest so now you have uh, instead of a thousand dollars you got one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars now you buy a lien for one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars right and you keep doing that and so and it just keeps growing and growing and growing I mean it's just a wonderful way of, of snowballing your retirement with this and uh, also just to understand even if um, the, the property you wind up getting the property. So there's a, so if the property doesn't redeem and you're working a non-redemption uh, strategy as opposed to a redemption strategy, if you're working a redemption strategy, that means you're more interested in the interest than you are in the property. But if you're working a non-redemption strategy and you wind up with the property, you'll get all of that money into your self-directed retirement account. So let's say you bought a, a lien for a thousand bucks right and uh, it was uh, against a property that's worth fifty thousand dollars well now instead of having a thousand dollars plus the twenty five percent interest which is one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars you wind up with a fifty thousand dollar property inside your retirement account now you can take that retirement account that that property and sell it out of the retirement account if you sell it for fifty thousand dollars now you got fifty grand in there uh, and you paid a thousand dollars for that fifty thousand dollar property or you can take that property and sell it for half price uh, which is what uh, I typically do uh, I just blow it out really fast to another investor who thinks that I'm insane uh, for selling it so cheaply but um, but this way I don't have to do anything special to the property I don't have to hold on to the property I just let it go for half price when you sell the property for half price, if it's a fifty thousand dollar property, you paid a thousand dollars for the tax lien, and you sell this fifty thousand dollar property for twenty five grand, twenty five thousand dollars. That's a tremendous spread. That's a tremendous profit. And then you take those twenty five thousand dollars, and then you buy more tax liens with that. There is nothing safer and uh, nothing more exciting than making money on that safe basis. So now, what do we do before your next class? What you want to do is review those 20 key tax lien terms. You want to do that. Think about it. Drill yourself a little bit. 
drill yourself on the different types of sales, right? Um, you know, what are they? You know, what's the, you've got the bid down, you've got rotational, you have overbid, you have all these different pieces, right? What are they? And just, you know, and just drill it down so that you've got it in your mind so that it's not so confusing, right? And we'll refer back to them as we go through some of the other, some of the other modules, but just have it in your mind. What type of sale would be the most advantageous to you? Meaning, what do you think would be the most advantageous to you? What type of sale do you like the most, right? What are you most comfortable with, right? So this is the, this is very important. What is your style of investing? Are you uh, going to be a property cowboy? You want to just go out and you want the properties and you want a non-redemption strategy every time, uh, or do are you uh, or you um, uh, a little more reserved and you know getting. Uh, 16, 18, 25 percent on your money a year. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, and you look at it. Well, you know what? As a person that's doing this on a steady basis, making that kind of return, and then on top of that, every now and then you get a property and you have this gigantic windfall. That's okay too. There's no wrong answer here. It's just a question of understanding, you know, who you are, right? And just understand, you know, and just look at it. Say, you know, which kind of sale would be the most helpful for me? Which would be the least helpful? Um, how about the struck off properties? What about those? Just start to, you know, insert yourself in some of these terms and start to uh, and start to think about it, right? And that's a very, very important. And just understand, okay, that there are states that offer tax liens. And there are states that offer tax deeds. As we go through the modules, we're going to talk about uh, each state, right, and uh, and uh, what they are, you know, in terms of all the uh, the tax lien states, all the tax lien certificate states, what the interest rate is, what the redemption period is, right? Because when it's a tax deed state, you're just buying the property flat out. You know, they just open it up and it's okay. Well, you know, what am I bid? Uh, and you're buying an actual deed when you're buying the tax lien certificate. That's where you have the potential of getting the property for the five and the ten and the fifteen cents on the dollar, right? So, um, what we'll do is we'll sign off now. Have a uh, have a wonderful day or night or whenever this is that you're listening to this, and just understand what um, if you if you're trying to figure out what is a great time for me to do this all the time. If you've got a regular job and a regular desk, then uh, every day at lunchtime it's a wonderful thing to be going through these modules. If you're a retired person. Go through the modules uh, every day at the same time every day. Pick a time, whether it's in the morning if you're a morning person or if you're an evening person. Uh, do it at night, but pick the same time each day and go through one of the modules. And then after you're done going through those modules, do it again. So uh, till next time, this is George Fuchs. Uh, be safe, be sane, and be profitable. We'll talk to you next time. Bye now.